Good morning, everyone, and welcome. We are here this morning for our press conference to address current matters relating to crime in Barbados. We have with us this morning the Attorney General of Barbados, Mr. Dale Marshall. We also have the Commissioner of Police, Mr. Richard Boyce, and we also have in attendance I too wish to commiserate with all of those who have been personally affected. You will note that I have referred to this increase in firearm crime as a spike. I use this term deliberately because that is exactly what it is, a sharp increase in numbers over a short period of time. This is not an indication that Barbados has descended into a state of chaos or outright lawlessness. We have dealt with spikes in crime before and effectively so. Crime as a whole is always a source of great concern, but firearm enabled crimes are of particular concern to the Barbadian public because of the fear that this kind of crime engenders across our communities. The government is not unmindful about the disquiet this continues to generate. And so this morning I'm going to try to contextualize the issue highlight what some of these main issues are, and outline what the government is doing to address the matter. But before proceeding to do that, let me provide a synopsis of the statistics relating to murders and firearms that have been provided to me by the Barbados Police Service. This is not a numbers exercise, but it is important that you understand what we're dealing with as a whole. I start with murders. In 2017, we had 30 murders. 23 of that 30 was by use of firearms. In 2018, we had 28 murders. 18 of those were by use of firearms. In 2019, we had a whopping 48 murders, and 30 of those were by use of firearms. In 2020, we began to see some decline. We had 41 murders, 26 by use of firearms. Last year, 2021, we had 32 murders, 17 of those were by firearms. So far for the year, we've had 17 murders, and 12 of those murders were by use of firearms. But it's important as we talk about the murders that we've suffered as a country, that we connect this to what the police force and how the police force has been dealing with it. So I want to speak briefly about what the police officers call their clearance rate. And I think the title will, will help you to immediately understand what we're talking about. And they go back to the same 2017. In 2017, of those 30 murders, 16 have been solved so far. In 2019, of the 28 murders, 19 have been solved. That's, that 19 amounts to 68%. In 2019, 27 of the 48 murders reported were solved. That's 56%. Of the 41 murders committed in 2020, 26, or 63%, have been solved. In 2021, 23, or 72%, of the 32 murders were solved. And for this year of the 17 murders thus far, 10 have been cleared up. And some of those have only happened in the last few weeks. And I'm informed by our statisticians that the clearance rates that I've just indicated to you compare very favorably with rates in the developed world, in countries that have far, far more resources available to them than we do. And Commissioner, this speaks volumes about the quality of your policing in Barbados that you are able to maintain and to reach a world-class clearance rate in relation to murders.
firearms. And I'm going to give you the numbers of firearms that we've recovered over the same 27. Eighty-two firearms. In 2019, police interdiction efforts netted 86 firearms. In 2020, 89 firearms were recovered. For the year 2021, 57 firearms were recovered. And for the period 1st January to, of this year to July 7th, the police have so far recovered 55 firearms. In fact, only yesterday, only yesterday, a successful police operation resulted in the seizure of a significant number of high-caliber handguns. The numbers that I've given you total 465 firearms recovered. And I hope you'll agree with me when I say that this is a huge amount of firearms to be taken off the streets of our country over this period. And while you could say that we, we need to do more, and that is always true, these are 465 firearms that cannot now be used by the criminal element to take the lives of Barbadians, whether young or old. I must also point out to you that over the period that I'm reviewing, many thousands of rounds of ammunition were also recovered. And this is important because guns are of no use without bullets. I share these figures on gun recovery and ammunition recovery to demonstrate firstly the extent of the firearm problem. If we can take 465 guns off the streets and you, you know that we haven't got all. So that would tell you immediately that we are facing a serious challenge. But also to highlight to you what the service is doing about it. Everybody wants to know what is the police doing? This is hard policing. This is a measure of the success story, both in the number of, of, of murders that they have solved and in the number of firearms that they have taken off the street. Let me repeat that number, ladies and gentlemen, 465 between 2017 and now. But even with all that we are doing, Barbadians have legitimate and reasonable questions and concerns. Where are the guns coming from? Who are involved? And what is causing this problem? Many commentators have weighed in on these issues, and it is clear that it requires a continued thorough analysis so that we understand always the many variables, including the causes. But what is particularly important is that we must resist the temptation to embark on knee-jerk reactions. And the commissioner, his high command, and, and myself as attorney general share this perspective. We cannot deal with these problems if we have recourse to knee-jerk reactions. Knee-jerk reactions will only result in treatment plans that are ineffective. On the other hand, interventions that are based on data, intelligence, and sound analysis is the far better approach. And this is the approach that my ministry and that law enforcement has taken. A full analysis of the data going over the years is, going, is ongoing. But we can say now, and perhaps we've always been able to say without fear of contradiction, that there are several strands to this problem and that no single factor will resolve it. Barbados does not manufacture guns. And this means, therefore, that illicit transportation and smuggling is a serious concern for us. Across the world, especially in our hemisphere, there are different legal systems. Some countries have weak border controls. But there are also the issues of different cultural practices around firearm use. You can, only, you can immediately think of the United States, where there is a prevailing view that everybody should be entitled to have a firearm, regardless of, of any risk that's associated or directed towards them. So these are all, all matters that affect how we receive firearms in Barbados, because if they are easily available in our other jurisdictions, then they are readily available 
for illicit importation and smuggling into Barbados. Ladies and gentlemen, while it is not a consolation, as I speak with you, every country in our sub-region is battling with the specter of increased firearm use. 